welcome to the Catskill Mountain Foundation for a works and process with Caleb Teicher and company, Rhapsody in Blue. I'm Caroline Cronson, the producer of Works and Process, the performing arts program at the Guggenheim. And we're intensely grateful to the Catskill Mountain Foundation, our host for today's Works and Process. They've hosted Caleb and Company's quarantined creative bubble residency for the last two weeks and now we get to see some of the work that they've made. Before we start I would like to thank not only the Catskill Mountain Foundation but the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation and Doris Duke Charitable Foundation for making this and all our other residencies possible. We couldn't move forward without their support in making us make it possible for artists to do what they do best, which is work, create and perform. So thank you very much. As part of our mandate, we not only commission work, but we like to illuminate the creative process so that you get to learn how it's done. So now we're going to see an excerpt from Rhapsody in Blue, and then Caleb Teicher is going to describe and discuss his process with Duke Dang, General Manager of Works and Process. So thank you and enjoy. Wow, thank you so much. My name is Duke Dang. I'm the general manager of Works in Process, and I'm so delighted to welcome Caleb Teicher and Co. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Now, before we dive in, we need to acknowledge this moment. It is March 19, 2021, the last day of winter in a very long year that has taken us through a pandemic, which we are still experiencing. We're here because 
the safety that is provided by a bubble residency, which means that all of the artists have quarantined before entering the bubble, have tested multiple times, after which they can enter the bubble and create as though it was 2019. So Caleb, can you tell us what it has been like to go into a bubble and to create with your company? Yeah, we've had the most wonderful two weeks, uh, nearly two weeks. After our self-isolation self period and after two COVID tests and being aware that we were doing this responsibly and safely, it was just such a joy to hug a bunch of people in this group that I had not hugged in a long time. And dancers are pretty huggy, germy, touchy-feely kind of people. Um, two, two of the dancers in this group are in my personal pod. My, they're my neighbors uptown. Uh, but for the rest of them, nothing beats getting to be together from an emotional standpoint and from a creative standpoint. So how has this moment, the pandemic, and also um, being together in this bubble residency affected your creative process and what we just saw and what we will see? Yeah, what you just saw seems pretty pretty appropriate, right? But all of all of those ideas that we just explored were things that had been explored with a Rhapsody in Blue piece in 2019. Um, I first had the sort of dream of making a piece to Rhapsody in Blue maybe in 2018, and I sort of wandered into a couple of rehearsals with the company in 2019 asking to play around with ideas. And the first thing on my mind was clearly the crescendo of that, uh, you know, the 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 riff, the lick that, that leads up to that powerful moment at the beginning of Rhapsody is a hug. It's so clearly a hug to me. Um, there was fertile ground there for uh, a piece about relationships, about being together, the, the essence of New York City. Obviously, I think we all had very powerful emotional feelings about New York City. All of us are essentially you know, lifelong New Yorkers or have been in New York for a long time. Um, but this was, it was, it was a it was a good time to reflect on what that means to each of us individually and then make a, a piece collectively. Um, I have to say, seeing that hug sent chills down my spine. It's so loaded, the gesture of a hug. Yeah, when we when we first worked in 2019, I'm, hugs are nice. I like watching people hug. It's a good time. But it did not have that weight. Um, so it, it, in no way is, is this meant to be a, quote, COVID piece. Um, but of course, there's no way to look at the piece now without without reading that that subtext because we are all we've we've all shared this collective experience as New Yorkers in the last year, and I, I think it it charges the piece in a particular way. Yeah. So just looking at the vocabulary, Larry, that we've seen so far, you know, when we first got to know you, Caleb, which was 2017, it was first as a tap dancer, and uh, we presented you in Bill Bow at the Guggenheim, and was it summer of 18? Summer uh, of 17, 17. Summer, summer 2017. 2017. It was a you were a tap dancer, and then we commissioned more forever from you, which you started to go into sand dance. Um, and a year ago, we were at the Guggenheim in the theater doing swing out, which is more Lindy Hop. Um, what vocabularies, what languages are you working in right now? That's a great question. Um, I feel like every time I make a piece. I am still finding a, a new vocabulary for myself as a solo dancer and as a partner dancer. Those are kind of the, let's say those are the two big categories. Dancing where I'm not in connection, physical connection with someone else, and dancing where I am in connection with someone else. Um, I've done a lot of tap dance. I've done a lot of jazz dance, solo jazz dance, vernacular jazz dance. I've done a lot of Lindy Hop. I've done a lot of other random stuff, honestly, as a, as a dancer in New York. A lot of us have a, a really uh, miscellaneous bag of bag of experiences that, that we share um, and that lives in our bodies. All that to say, this work is not a Lindy Hop piece of music, nor is it necessarily, I'm, tap dance is sort of done to just about everything now, but it, it doesn't, there's no tap dance in this piece, which is maybe a first for me in terms of a, a big piece. Um, essentially, we're trying to find a vocabulary that feels like the type of moving we want to do when we hear this music. Um, there's a lot of partner dancing because I've missed touching people. And uh, and this is a great opportunity because this is the only scenario in which we'll get to do this kind of dancing uh, this year, seemingly, um, until until the public health scenario is different. Um, all that to say, um, I would love to ask a couple people to come out one at a time, and we're just going to talk a little bit about the different styles of partner dance that are uh, being done in this show. 
Um, I might just hold the mic. Um, let's start with, can I ask Gabby Cook to come out? Hi, Gabby. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow the Lindy Hop with a mic in my hands. So the Lindy Hop is a, is a vernacular jazz partner dance form uh, that grew out of the African-American communities in Harlem around the Savoy Ballroom and Lafayette and the Alhambra and, and uh, other, other ballrooms uptown. And it's frequently in six counts and eight counts, and you might have known as East Coast Swing. Not, not that name. Uh, let's call it Lindy Hop. Um, and Gabby's going to lead me in the Lindy Hop, and hopefully I do a good job. That's called a swing out. That's called a circle to close. The names don't matter. Well, I don't know. So, Caleb, should we talk about lead and follow? Yes. Um, thanks, Gabby. Um, lead and follow. Uh, I was following then. In the piece, I lead. In the piece, I follow. Pretty sure everyone in the company does some elements of leading and following throughout the work, just about. Um, quite frequently, uh, as dancers, when we do partner dancing socially or choreographically, we don't uh, adhere to those binaries. Leading and following switch. They swap. They change. The, the lines sort of become uh, transparent or what have you. Um, in that scenario, I was just following. Gabby was just leading. She did a great job. Um, the next thing that happens in the piece, can I grab Latasha Barnes? <laughs> Hi, Latasha. Um, there's a moment, uh, which you won't see today, where essentially we just wanted to move in a line of dance circle really, really fast. Uh, and we looked at a bunch of old Peabody videos and, and other sort of like fast foxtrot videos, and we came up with something that looks like this. I'm going to have to put the mic down for this. You know, the music speaks <laughs> what, it, what it wants, and that was it. Um, can I call Nathan out? We're going to do some polka. Nathan views uh, one of my long, oh, I should mention that I was leading Latasha in that moment. Why? Just felt right. <laughs> um, and Nathan. Na oh, Nathan's our resident Lindy Hop world champion, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would, if there's a ballet master of the company, it's probably Nathan. When we have a, a technical or philosophical question, Nathan has something great to say about it. Um, Nathan and I do a little bit of polka at some point. Um, you won't see that today either, but here's what our little polka looks like. Thanks, Nathan. Um, lastly, uh, this will actually get us into our next excerpt. Um, I'm going to bring out, well, I guess I'll, I'll meet Abdiel for this moment. Uh, but Abdiel is a, actually a longtime friend of mine uh, who I mostly knew socially, like as a, as a human that you talk to. Um, but then I started following them out uh, hustle dancing in 2018, 2019, every once in a while. And then Abdiel would follow me to swing dances, and we became social dance friends, which sounds wild from a professional perspective that you imagine that we hang out and we choose to dance once work is done, but that is sort of the anchor of most of our dance practices in the company. We are social dancers, and then we are concert dancers. Uh, Abdiel and I are doing some hustle. Um, there was a, a section of the work that just seemed quite clear that there should be something in the hustle style. Obviously, this is not hustle dance, uh, tra traditional hustle dance music, um, but this section uh, really works for me. So I think we should probably just get into that. So I'll clear the chairs, you'll do the demonstration of the hustle, and then we'll go into excerpt number, number two. Yep.
Thank you so much. I love seeing that hustle. <laughs> so, um, thank you, Abdiel. Thanks to, it was Jennifer Jones and Latasha Barnes and Macy Sullivan and Gabby Cook who came out to Slow Dance, right? Cool. Thank you all. So, um, let's talk about the music. Why Rhapsody in Blue and why now? Two great questions. Um, I grew up in New York State and have lived in New York City for the past 11 years. So, I'm a lifelong New Yorker. I could argue that with people who live in the city all their lives, but regardless, New York is definitely home. Um, to me, Rhapsody in Blue is an expression of New York. Um, it's also, it's a bit manic. Um, it is frenetic. It's confusing. It's beautiful. It's too fast. It's a lot of things that New York is. Um, why now? Honestly, it's just been on my to-do list. Um, recently, I have been performing. So the recordings that we're hearing are of Conrad Tao, who's a dear friend of mine, but will also be performing uh, the music live for us. We don't have the, the great fortune of having Conrad with us in the bubble residency. Um, so we're rehearsing to uh, recordings that Conrad made from his apartment. Uh, but Conrad and I have been performing a duo show recently, and we incorporate Rhapsody in Blue into that show. And that is just me tap dancing and Conrad playing piano. But in my mind, this work is meant for more people. It's meant for a feeling of community. It's meant for a feeling of disparate styles and, and people and experiences coming together. Um, and that's not something I can physicalize in my singular body. Um, but I love that you're bringing in dancers with such different backgrounds to embody this music yeah, in that, this that's piece. Like, that's like kind of our jam. And it's honestly, s like, of course there are challenges. There are some, there's some pieces of vocabulary or some dance styles or some, some moments that seem so familiar to others and are brand new to others. But honestly, I, I do feel like that's sort of the spice of life and it keeps our, uh, our experience of working together really rich because we all have something to share. Uh, during this week, we've rotated who teaches warm-up class each morning. So we get here at 10. And one morning it's Macy, and it feels, um, I mean, Macy's done a lot of things, but it feels grounded in modern dance, and it feels grounded in jazz dance, and it feels grounded in uh, Cunningham. And then Abdiel taught a uh, warm-up class one morning, and they just taught a hustle class. Latasha taught her family line dance and whacking, and I don't even know what I taught. Um, I mean, it's very emblematic of New York, what you're describing, and also... I think Rhapsody in Blue is so emblematic. It is a, the musical portrait of New York City. Yeah, but at the same time, it has a lot of things going on in it, which is why it feels so emblematic. It's not because there is an iconic New York look or a New York style or a New York feeling. New York is everything all at once. Um, and similarly, I've, I keep describing this work um, when, when asked with words as a kaleidoscope because kaleidoscopes take everything that you're seeing straight on and sort of dance it around for you and morph it into these uh, really unusual patterns. And uh, for me, I've been thinking a lot in the last year about how New York is a sort of collapsing of space and time and experiences and, and different perspectives. Um, it feels like my neighbor and I are living completely different lives, but we're right next to each other. Right. right. So, we're so, so we're sort of living all these different versions of New York all at once. Yeah. So today is the last day of winter, and tomorrow is the first day of spring. It's a moment of rebirth for all of us, and we're so excited. Uh, and we did not plan it this way, but the last performance and the last time we saw each other was a project that you were directing called Swing Out. It was at the theater at the Guggenheim on February 24th, 2020. The world closed, shut down, the pandemic happened, and we're reopening live performances in New York City tomorrow um, in the same building, in the rotunda of the Guggenheim with Rhapsody in Blue. Um, so this has just been an incredible journey that we're taking together. Thank you so much, Caleb. Um, before we close out this program, we'd like to thank the dancers. Thanks, Jennifer Jones, Latasha Barnes, Gabby Cook, Macy Sullivan, Nathan Bew, Abdiel Jacobson, and Conrad Tao on piano who will be performing live tomorrow. And uh, of course, thank you so much, Caleb, for sh sharing this with us. Thank you. We do that right?